Hi, I'm yeah. Kelly Hofer. This is Emily Bogus, and this is Theory of Curiosity. Yes. Uh, so the journey I'm going to take you on today um, is we're going to talk about syphilis, which is a very sexy disease. Yes. Um, I really wanted to uh, when I when I thought about this, the first thing that I knew about it was that there's so many levels of mm -hmm. it. You know, there's like three different kind of stages that it goes through. There's yep. this, primary, secondary, tertiary thing, right? So it gets kind of, more and more deadly as it goes on, right? Not necessarily, not more deadly. Okay. The symptoms are just different each time. So um, I think it seems like, um, you know, the, the third stage is kind of like the most typically deadly, but people yeah. definitely die in From all the second stages, stage, yeah, yeah. right? Um, so with that being in mind, I was like, I'm really interested to see how this bacteria moves from one thing to another yeah, like yeah. how does it infect each different thing and what are the pathways it yeah. uses and all that kind of you know hoopla yeah, yeah. and Where, how it spreads and how it survives yeah, yeah yeah and i did um pages and pages and pages of research on this and found out that they're uh they actually don't know yeah these things as because, with many things. Yeah, um, and the reason that they don't know it is because they can't grow it in vitro, and this is an example of an in vitro yeah. um, kind of growth. Um, this is actually a, I got, we got this off the internet, but um, <laughs> this is actually an eight-year-old boy's handprint after he come in, came in from playing outside. So there's it's, lots of very artistic. And, yeah, it kind of looks like a flower child, which I like about it. Yeah. <laughs> Your hand's smaller than that. But anyway, so this is an example of in vitro um, growth, and mm -hmm. it's something that's outside of the host organism, yeah. right? So you can't grow syphilis in a petri dish. No. So they can't really study it very much. Yeah, Do they know why they can't study it that way? They just haven't found a way yet, I guess. So yeah, I don't know why. Interesting. Um, it's um, it's an interesting bacteria because yeah, they can't do it there, and it's only a human pathogen. Yeah. So to study it in animals is really really hard. So, so it's done, not even in apes. No, no, they've done. Wow, yeah, that's a very specific gene. Yeah, it's just humans. Or a very that it specific likes. bacteria. Yeah, exactly. Interesting. So it's really interesting because there's. <sighs> They can't really research it by doing any growth um, outside of a human, and including animal studies, like they have to do this weird thing where they kind of protect it, like there's some that have been done with rabbits, yeah. but they have to kind of protect the bacteria against the rabbit almost to do it, because it's not its natural yeah, habitat, yeah. so it isn't super great even then, so yeah. we don't know a lot of the reasons why it can invade and why it, you know, can colonize in humans yeah. and how it moves from, you know, place to place in humans because we just can't really see it. However, we're doing a lot of DNA studies. Um, why I guess, can't you see it? Because you can't, you can't like actually watch it happening. You can't like right. infect a human on purpose and yeah. watch it happen, right? <laughs> yeah. That's fair. Does it never grow on the surface of a human? Is it always inside? Always inside. Oh, yeah. so it's it's very specific. Totally, and I'll get into why that is too. So yeah. those are some interesting things that I learned actually through the DNA research yeah. that been, they've been doing. They've actually um, found that there's not a lot of um, DNA that codes for... <sighs> okay, so I'll start with this. Oxygen is actually a toxic thing yeah. for a lot of organisms. So Because it oxidizes everything. Exactly. So yeah. there's... I think that's why. I can't really remember why. But the but thing is... When searching for new worlds, one of the main things you look for oxygen is because it's so reactive to everything that it has to keep being replenished in order for there to be any in the atmosphere. Well, and that is often a sign of life. Yes, well, or that's could true. could be a sign of life. That's really cool. Yeah, because otherwise it would oxidize with iron because iron is one of the most common elements in the universe. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. So exactly. So that's one of the reasons. But anyway, this is really interesting because it actually doesn't have. The, um, it ha doesn't have a lot of the enzymes that can yeah. react with oxygen to make it not toxic. So that's why. Oh, so it's actually considered okay. a microaerophile. Yeah. And a microaerophile is something that exists only that's in a tiny little bit of oxygen. So that's yeah. why it's an only an STD mm -hmm. or a um, uh, kind of in. What am I trying to say? It's something that goes from mother to yeah. fetus very easily. Yeah. Um, so 
both of those environments don't require it to live outside of the body for any length of time, yeah, yeah. which it likes, right? Because it doesn't like all the oxygen. So that's why it's not something that you can pick up from water or from oh, okay. air. Because from... it has a lot of oxygen in the H2O. Right. And a lot of stray oxygen atoms. Interesting. Right. So, so it you... doesn't like things like so that. Can... I mean, water is a bit different, but no available oxygen. Yeah. So if you just wash it off your hands, it's gone, basically. Mm -hmm. If you happen to get it on there. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's if it goes, it, it might go in through tiny little pores, little you know yeah. breaks in your skin yeah, yeah. kind of thing. But that's kind of it. Um, so that's really interesting thing about syphilis, is, and that's why it's only a sexually transmitted mm -hmm. disease or infection or whatever you want to call it now. Um, Okay, so there's things called virulence factors that bacteria have, mm -hmm. or any kind of path pathogen would have, that make it so that it's easily colonizing your body, like invading it, colonizing it, all that yeah. stuff, that, that makes it do what it do does to you, really? yeah, yeah. is called a virulence factor. Mm -hmm. um, so a virulence factor, like, one of the main ones that this guy has is that it um, is actually able to go in through um, endothelial cells. Mm -hmm. yeah. So once it gets into your bloodstream through sex or whatever yeah. you're doing, um, it actually goes from your bloodstream into the rest of your body by being able to invade these. So these endothelial cells okay. line all of your lymph nodes, all of your lymph tissue, like all of yeah. your lymph kind of... And uh, the vessels, vessels and all of all of your blood vessels and your heart vessels, so it can go anywhere it wants. So they probably get exposed to the most things other than the blood lining or the stomach lining. Most different kind of pathogens. Oh, more, yeah, I would say more for oh, okay. sure. Yeah, I mean, there's some that only exist in the gastrointestinal tract. Yeah. But I would say more for sure, probably mm -hmm. invade the blood as so well. So it must be so. a pretty hardy cell. Yeah. Yeah, that's what they're thinking. Um, it's also motile via something called... What does motile mean? Motile means it, it moves, can move. yeah. by this way, right? So, um, this guy is considered a spirochete, uh, which basically is, you know, a kind of <laughs> spinny bacteria like that. And the way that it actually moves is by something called endoflagella. And the endoflagella, which, yeah, so endo means under or yeah. internal. And flagella, like, an ectoflagella is like a tail on a bacteria. Like, sometimes you'll actually see them have, like, a so tail like a sperm. whipping around. Like a sperm cell. So. That would be an ecto. Or, sorry, yeah, an ecto. One. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it would be an outside one. But this is an endoflagella. So it actually wraps around the bacteria to give it that shape that twisty corkscrew shape and it moves itself like a corkscrew for your body so it's actually the corkscrew and so it's like a snake but a snake just does it on two planes exactly so it's like this yeah. um so is the whole thing here syphilis the whole all of those guys are syphilis like yeah it's, there's so multiple it's not, of them in this picture though, so it's, it's, so it's not wrapped around anything here no but it doesn't it's it's naturally a coil all the time. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. have to be wrapped, be wrapped oh, okay. around something. And actually, it's kind of wrapped around its endoflagella. Yeah. Right? So, so part of what gives it its shape, and it, that's what gives its its motility, actually. So that's how it moves. Interesting. So, so the outer... I wonder if they ever... So is this a blood vessel? Is this whole thing a blood vessel? No, that's all a bacteria. Oh, so that's... it's invading the bacteria. No, 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 no. No, it's actually something that's part of, like it's like oh, the this, arm. Oh, this is the whole, this is the profile of the... The side of it. Of the yeah, syphilis. so this is... Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought the, the line here that's curving here, that's the syphilis part. No. But no, that's everything the, here. That's the endoflagella. Okay, so yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, so there we go. Good <laughs> questions, for sure. So, <laughs> it's interesting. Okay, so I'm going to go into, you know, what the symptoms are of syphilis. So, obviously you get it through, you know sex, generally yeah. speaking. Um, they're not sure about, like I said, done some studies into mm -hmm. whether needle sharing can be, you know, a probable thing. Cause it's, it, it seems like it would be, yeah, especially if you can get on the inside of the needle where there's still fluid being stored. Exactly. You'd think it would be. Yeah. Um, there isn't a lot of evidence to say yay or nay mm -hmm. about it. So I they guess don't they'd have to stick people to no. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so which we can't do anymore. Because they used can't... to do that back yeah. in the day, but because you can't test it in, in a petri dish whether or not it's still there. Yeah, or animals. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> which we think is ethical too, which I, whatever, that's yeah. fair, whatever. The 
first level of syphilis is you get something called a shanker. And I'm going to tell you this because it blew my mind. Like <laughs> That's a hilarious name. Blew yeah. my mind. Okay. Yeah. You know canker sores, right? Yeah. Yeah. Shanker is what it's supposed to be called, apparently. Didn't know that, and I'm like 32. Yeah. So what's supposed to be called a shanker? So it's called like, a, it's called a canker, like it's like spelled out canker, yeah. like C H A N C R E, yeah. like you would say a canker sore on yeah, your yeah. like lip or whatever, because we're eating way too much salt, which happens too much for me, but that's fine. Um, but yeah, so it's actually called a shanker because I saw it, like it was on a website yeah. that I was looking at, and all of them agreed all the things about this syphilis yeah. shanker were like it's actually it's actually pronounced S H. A-N. So it's shanker, not canker. So, so what you have here is a shanker sore. Technically. Like, oh, wow. Right? I know. That is, yeah. Blew my mind. <laughs> <laughs> it shouldn't have probably blown my mind, but I was like, what? Like, I had to take a break from researching for a second. Like, whoa. I'll put a book away to think. <laughs> exactly. Shanker. I've been saying it wrong my whole life. So you get a shanker on your, you know, bathing suit area. Sometimes your mouth mm -hmm. as well. Or instead of. Yeah. Um, generally it's one. Um, it can be some of them, but generally mm -hmm. it's just one. And it's a painless bump. Yeah. That you can't really tell what's going on. So I thought it doesn't live on the outside. And no, that's under your skin though. Oh, okay, so it's not an open sore or anything like that. No. Okay. No, it's just it's just like a canker sore on your oh, okay. Right? Yeah. So I've never had either that I can oh. remember. I get way too many shanker sores from <laughs> having way too much salt. It's yeah, a problem. Yeah. Isn't it? <laughs> anyway, so um, it's interesting because yeah, they just get that bump. It's called a shanker, and it's painless. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they'll get so swollen lymph nodes, like yeah. a little teeny bit, but it's not a really drastic kind of um, you know symptom. It's not like you're gonna be like. Yeah. Oh! And like go to the doctor right away or yeah, anything yeah, yeah. because of it. But how long does it take to get over that um, well, benignness? Yeah. Okay. Relative benignness. And the primary symptoms appear ten to ninety days after. That's pretty. The that's pretty slow. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you can. Is it? Can you spread it easily in that whole time? Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. how it got spread so much in the when it when the outbreaks were bad. So many reasons. That, yeah. that yeah, and I mean it's the outbreaks are bad right now. Like yeah. right now is a is a huge huge issue with syphilis being you know a new kind of well, outbreak. But yeah, everyone's doing the whole. I'm not going to get immunized and that thing. So there's a lot of diseases that are coming back in that way. I suppose syphilis isn't one of them. Though. Yeah, there's no immunization for syphilis. That's fair. Yeah, because if you can't, if you can't research it in a petri dish, you can't easily create a, a drug to. No. To counter it. Because exactly. you have to be able to study it over and over outside of the human host before you test it on human hosts. Yeah. Yeah, it's a real stumbling block. I didn't realize we had such a huge stumbling block with yeah. researching syphilis, but hey, now you know, guys. Are they still studying it, or have they it's the, just I mean, I saw caring. some recent yeah. ones, yeah, because there's a, those new outbreaks, right? Yeah. So most of the research I saw from recent times is actually how um, guess... syphilis is affected by somebody who has HIV. Because oh, that's okay. a really big risk factor that they're noticing is happening right now. In, so. in which way? Um, well, more people who already have HIV have syphilis. Oh, I guess, yeah, because yeah, they, catching they, it. they have a compromised immune system. Totally. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, so um, they um, definitely talked about that a lot. So it's an average of 21 days after, mm -hmm. so a lot of people don't connect it with, like, you know, this person I had sex with, or that person I had yeah. sex with, or whatever, right? And it's this kind sense. of benign little shanker thing that's like, mm -hmm. eh, whatever, it's not really an issue. Yeah. Um, and it's interesting because a lot of, there's actually been studies on who notices what stage the most and men mo notice the first stage because everything's on the outside yeah women basically never do we only o we only notice it during the secondary stage why do you not get chankers we do but they're inside so and they're painless so why would we notice it fair enough yeah it's not like you know yeah. You look that often. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Fair enough. yeah. <laughs> you know <laughs> but with guys it's just there so. yeah 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 um any versus outie Right. Yeah. <laughs> Annie's role. Anyway. <laughs> so, um, okay. So, yeah. So, I mean, sometimes it'll be tender to the touch, but that's basically it. It's yeah. not like this huge, you know, red light kind of sign that you yeah. have this thing. So, um, okay. So, secondary syphilis is the next one. So, um, it comes, it can come anywhere from like 
you know, a couple months to like a couple weeks after yeah. the first kind of um, mm -hmm. primary symptoms show up, which a lot of people don't notice. Yeah. So one third of the people who actually have the secondary syphilis already will still have the chancre. Yeah. And so it never goes away. Right. Okay. And two thirds of them won't anymore. So it just yeah. goes away. Even if you were worried about it in the first place, it's gone. La di da da da. You're totally fine. And then the secondary sy symptoms come up, and literally syphilis affects everything. It can yeah. affect everything. It can yeah. make you go deaf. It can affect your ocular nerves. It can affect your kidneys. It can affect your so liver. It, it can, it, and like generally, the thing. So that which people, which system does it get around by the blood system? Oh, know. we don't know. <laughs> yeah. Holy they shit. Know. They, they, know. they don't know anything. <laughs> yeah. They just know that it can invade the rest of the body through those epi epithelial cells. Okay. And I yeah. guess they're in the right against the bloodstream. So probably the bloodstream. Yeah. Which is why it can affect everything. So yeah. it can affect yeah. your heart. It can affect your liver. It can affect... It can cause kidney failure. Yeah. It can cause deafness, like I said. It so can by what me what does it do that causes that? Do we know that? Nope. Does it just like screw everything and like punch holes in everything? No, it doesn't punch holes. I mean, bacteria doesn't punch holes in things. There's not yeah. physical holes. Is it a chemical things, reaction? Generally. No, it's an invasion of cells. Yeah. Yeah. It's, so it's they overtake the food supply? They don't know. Oh, okay. I know these are other things answers. I'd be able to tell you, right? Other yeah. things I'd be able to tell you, but this one they can't. They don't know. Yeah. From what I could tell, they don't know. So, I mean, there was no information on it. So. Interesting, nonetheless. So, um, the secondary um, stage involves skin lesions all over your body. And yeah. most of the time, it's like always going to be on your palms of your hands and always going to be on the soles of your feet. Oh, so there's these big, um, uh, yeah, often um, pussy kind of like yeah. lesions all over your body. So, this mm. is generally when people kind of start to clue in that maybe they have an issue. Mm. Um, the other symptoms, which is, I mean, the everything else, I mean, gastrointestinal symptoms, liver, blah, yeah. blah, blah, those are less common yeah. than the lesions. And yeah, they're harder body. to notice because you can get, like, upset stomach from a million different reasons. Exactly, yeah. So they actually call it the great mimicker. And that's the really big problem uh, with syphilis is because it mimics almost everything else. So it's like, like you uh, have the flu. What's the other disease in the, in the show house? Lupus? Oh, lupus. Yeah. Yes. Everything, it's lupus everything could be lupus. There we go. Because lupus mimics everything, I think. Yes, exactly, yes. And so does this. And I mean, it can cause lots and lots and lots of things here sore throat, headache, fatigue, nausea. Yeah. I mean, that's. That can describe everything. I've had all of those right? at different times. Exactly. Have you had syphilis? Do I have syphilis? I don't know. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> we'll check and see. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so then there's um, then there's latent syphilis. So there's an asymptomatic period of syphilis after that secondary stage, which can last like a year to around four years. Yeah. And you're very, oh, very wow. contagious during that time. As you so, would be, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so a lot of people don't know that they have something that goes away, they're totally fine, they feel great, mm -hmm. you know. So is, <laughs> does there exist any mediation against it? Totally, yeah. So we use penicillin mostly. Yeah. Now there's like other, you know, therapies for it as yeah. well, but primarily, the the thing that we use now is penicillin and it's, it's actually interesting because when we came up with penicillin was the first time that we had an effective cure yeah. against syphilis and it's oh, still so we the do number have a one cure. thing that we use oh yeah oh, okay yeah now we do but back in the day yeah they definitely did but that. there's no vaccine no Okay. No, that's yeah. that's where I was confused. There's no preventative thing, yeah, yeah. except for you know not sleeping with people. Yeah, and that's not general. gonna happen. And that's not gonna happen, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Let's be honest. So yeah. So you're still infectious for those you know year to four years after. Then there's you know a really really late syphilis kind of period. So um, between five and twenty five years, that's when the uh, neurosyphilis starts to kind of creep up. Yeah, it's really, really, really far out. so after. slow. I know. Yeah, so that's the thing that happened super, super commonly back in the day, right? So, I mean, they didn't have these effective cures against I it. I wonder if there were any big cultural changes that came from that specific effect after that time, like the invention of insane asylums because there was all of a sudden a spike in... Totally, totally. There must have been. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. usually large diseases like that have a very 
long-lasting impact on population. Yeah, exactly. And it's actually super fascinating how many different effects it's had oh, yeah. on, you know, how our society runs today and everything. So we will get into that later. That's the that's the spicy, you know, yeah. part of it to me. This is kind of dry and sciencey, but it's still interesting. Yeah, yeah. And it'll give you an idea as to what was actually happening with these guys back in the day, um, yeah. in the pre-penicillin era, which is what they call it with syphilis yeah. specifically. So penicillin was invented around eighteen, late eighteen hundreds. No, I think it's nineteen forties. Oh, it's that with okay. Yeah. Holy shit. I'm pretty sure it was the nineteen forties ish. Maybe it was wow. discovered before then, but yeah, actually used. So um, anyway, there was there's cardiovascular syphilis, so it can cause tons and tons of valve, valvular issues yeah. in your heart, and it makes it so that your valves don't actually work. And the valves are, if you know anything about heart function, pretty important yeah. well, when it they, comes to your they heart. Make, they make the beat. Yeah, Literally. I mean, they, they make yeah, I mean, muscle spasms yeah, yeah. and valves. So are do really they the thing, do right? they affect the valve muscle? Or is it something they, else? They can affect everything. I guess they're in your heart. Yeah, so, anything that needs blood. Right. Exactly. So it, there's something called cardiovascular syphilis that people get. Uh, this is 10 to 30 years post-infection, um, and like I said, it causes a whole host of heart issues, including angina, which is like reduced blood flow to the heart, and that causes the chest pain that people yeah, yeah. talk about. You know, um, so. That's interesting. It's, it doesn't happen anymore. Yeah. Really, now now that we have, you know, treatments for mm -hmm. things, people usually only get up to, like, secondary syphilis, and then it's gone, yeah, right? Yeah. We, you know, in the... We can spot. Yes, us in the developed world, it's not like it ever gets past secondary for yeah. us, usually, you know, unless somebody's, like, really, really neglectful about their own health. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, which I guess some people... There's are. quite a lot of people like that. It's true, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, um, after the invasion, the patient may get neurosyphilis, or they may not. So, they may, yeah. they could get, um, they could get reactionary, like, like, meningitis from that, which is swelling of the meninges, which is the thing that's around your spinal cord, like, you're around your spinal cord, and causes... I have no reference. Yeah, I actually got sort of meningitis when I was younger, so I had to spend my entire, like, I think I was four? I think I was four, yeah. and I had to spend my entire Christmas when I was four like this the entire time. I, like, couldn't move my head the whole time. It was awful. I have, like... Oh, because it was swollen so much? Yeah, so it cringed your neck down? up. Were you laying down? I had to. Oh, okay. Yeah, but, like, I couldn't do anything but keep my head up even when I was standing up. It was really oh. bad. So, yeah. For I mean, how long? Uh, I think it was like a week or two weeks oh, or something. Great. Yeah, yeah, it was wonderful. Good Christmas. <laughs> anyway, so I actually have memories. This is one of my first memories is being like uh, for Christmas. Yeah, um, yeah. So it can cause um, meningitis, which is swelling of the of the meninges, which yeah. is the stuff that is around your um, central nervous system yeah. and kind of protects it. So right? It's like the insulating layer. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. And. Um, it can cause that, it can cause, you know, it can be spontaneously resolved in the system. There's lots of different directions that it can go. Yeah. But some people get something called neurosyphilis. And neurosyphilis... It goes into the brain. Exactly. Yeah, so, yeah, it causes... Um, there's actually two different kinds of neurosyphilis. And it, they're, one of them is called paresis, yeah. and the other one's called uh, Tabes dorsalis. I'm going to take a wild shot and see that the paresis one paralyzes you? No, actually. Okay. I know, I thought that too when I first looked at it, but no. Um, so both of these lovely um, kind of tertiary stage syphilis symptoms are much more common in men yeah. than they are in women. Well done, man. So <laughs> paresis kind of appears as classic dementia. So, okay. Yeah, so I mean, talking to yourself, loss of, you know, taking care of yourself and your body yeah, and yeah. how you look and... Um, cognitive, yeah, cognitive impairment and psychotic symptoms and all that kind of stuff. And, and is anything known about how that affects the brain? Like, no. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I thought I was going to know all this stuff. We need to get more funding to syphilis research. Right? Well, actually, we can wipe it out, so maybe it'll be okay. We can wipe it out. It hasn't happened yet. It's well, actually I, gotten worse recently. Okay. <laughs> I, I revert that statement. Yeah, that's, that's hopeful thinking, though. Yeah. But yeah. Um, and then there's this Tabes dorsalis um, version of neurosyphilis. And this one causes um, the early manifestations of it are lightning pains 
on your whole body, but mostly directed at the lower limbs. So when we get so into it's the like next, jabs of pain, like like no lightning pain, like like shoots of like nerve pain oh, yeah, through yeah. your whole body. Spontaneous so, chemical electro reactions. Exactly. So that's kind of what it would feel like, you know, Just in your body. That's so painful. Yes, exactly. And we'll get into that more in the, the next okay. segment as well, because there's some really interesting history <laughs> on that. Um, so actually 75 to 90 percent of patients yeah. that have this particular kind of neuro, um, neurosyphilis have those lightning pains. So it's a really, really good marker. One of the most common things with this particular type of neurosyphilis is those lightning pains that we were talking yeah, about. Yeah. So um, another one that, like another really lovely symptom that, symptom that it has is unexplained vomiting mm -hmm. um, constantly. So. so is that triggered by the stomach or by the... Another thing we don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I know. It's really frustrating. So anyway. Syphilis, you know, the unknown disease. Exactly. People out there do more research on this so that we can figure out more of this stuff because there's a lot of questions. Yeah. But, you know, this is just part of that adventure where we're, you know, now we have kind of more specific questions as opposed to broader questions. Yeah, so I like we've that. covered that, haven't we? Yeah, more specific unknowns. Exactly. So um, that's basically it for this one. Um, the next segment is going to be about the history of syphilis, which I think is, you know, the spicy meatball <laughs> when it comes to this. This is, you know, pretty dry, but I really, really love this, yeah. the history and there's, how it... Yeah, there's no such thing as dry information. I suppose. Yeah. It's just Unless not. it's about sand or something. Sand oh, is very fascinating, too. It's when it's dry. <laughs> Sorry, I had to. Okay. Um, anyway, I also wanted to do a shout out to Ryan um, for making the ear funny earworm music that we have at the beginning and the end of our yeah. um, our little segments here. It's amazing. I love it. Kind of makes me think of like a tiny little robot, you know, <laughs> like a beep boop robot. Right yes, there. like like this guy. Hi. <laughs> think about this one when you're thinking about the music. <sighs> We're gonna say. Goodbye to our friend Syphilis for a while. Bye, Syphilis. Bye, Syphilis. <laughs> Bye, guys. Yeah. See ya.